Hi everyone, this is Anna, one of your consumer technology specialists at Midcontinent Public Library. Today we are going to take a look at some free movie and TV streaming services. So when we talk about streaming a movie or a TV show, we are talking about playing a video through a constant internet connection. So your internet is continually playing the file as you watch it, and then it doesn't save on your device or anything like that. Because of that, this is very different than downloading a video from the internet and then watching it anywhere you want, whether or not there is an internet connection. With streaming, you always have to have that internet connection in order for it to work. This is something to especially keep in mind if you are looking at different streaming services, especially if you're considering using these as a replacement for cable TV. While the services we're going to look at today may be free, you do still need a strong internet connection to stream content. So if your connection isn't strong enough, your video is probably going to look blurry or pixelated and it might buffer all the time or sometimes the video just won't play at all or it'll stop and then it won't continue. Successful streaming depends on the strength of your internet and the quality of the video that you're trying to play. If your video is in standard definition, which is what you would have seen on TV screens before we started getting big screen TVs, that's standard definition and it's not going to take as much to play a video in standard definition as it would in ultra HD definition. So if you've ever heard someone talking about 4K, that's what they're talking about is super high resolution video. The reason why a standard definition video does not take as much to be able to stream it is because it doesn't have as many pixels per inch. So the image is not going to be as sharp and the bigger your kind of monitor or TV that you're playing it on is, the more you'll really see that. Whereas an Ultra HD video is going to be very sharp because there's a lot of pixels in there to make up the image but that also does mean the file size is bigger and it just takes more to send it through an internet connection to stream. So you can access and stream content via a dedicated app or through a web browser on the services website. Pretty much all of these services we're going to look at have both an app and a website, so you have both options. Smart TVs may even come with some of these apps pre-installed, or they may allow you to add these apps. You may also need some supplementary equipment in order to use these streaming services, especially if you're wanting to stream to your TV. If you don't have a smart TV, which means a TV that connects to the internet via Wi-Fi, you may need something like a streaming stick, which is like a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick that will pick up the Wi-Fi signal and then translate it. It's plugged into the TV and that's how you get the stream onto the TV. You may also just want an HDMI cable if you can play the video on your computer but would prefer to watch it on your TV. HDMI cables are what you can use to plug it from one to the other. You may also need an adapter to connect 
your device to the HDMI cable. And then the HDMI cable, more than likely there is a spot to plug that in on your TV. Another thing to note, and this is specifically for the free streaming services, is they are all going to have some sort of advertising. That's how they're able to provide their content for free. So really, you can just think of it as watching commercials on a live TV channel. Most services also recommend or require an account to watch their content. Some of them do let you just watch whatever video you find. You can just hit play and start watching right away. But with an account, you would be able to browse through their collection and add titles to a personal list, like a watch list. And then when you come back at another time, you'd be able to find those titles again much more easily from this list. I really see there being two different types of free streaming services. There are the services that are completely free, and then there are services that are actually a free tier of a larger paid service. We are going to look at a couple of each of these types today. Some of the completely free services that you may or may not have heard of include Crackle, Pluto TV, Tubi TV, Plex, Fossum TV, and Haystack News. Free tiers can currently be found on services like Amazon, Sling TV, Vudu, and YouTube. So let's start with Crackle. Crackle is a free streaming service that is run by Sony, and it has movies, TV shows, and even original programming. One original show that they had, which has then moved on to Netflix, it was originally on Crackle. It was Jerry Seinfeld's show called Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Crackle was the first to have this original series, and it was kind of like short episodes, like 15-minute episodes, where he would pick up other comedians in vintage cars, and they would just drive around, go to a local eatery, and just talk about life and the industry and whatever. That is an example of the kind of original programming that Crackle has had in the past. Crackle is an ad-supported service, and it's available in the U.S. Some of the content is only going to be available for a limited time, and actually with all streaming services, you should never expect a specific movie or TV show to be on that service forever, like the Jerry Seinfeld show even originals sometimes get removed for one reason or another. The contracts and agreements that streaming services have with the content creators, the companies making the movies and the TV, these contracts are constantly changing, which means that the content on the streaming services are also constantly changing. It's a lot less common for an original by a streaming service to be removed, but movies and other TV shows may come and go pretty regularly. And Crackle does look like it has quite a long list of titles. They do have, it looks like, a mix of shows and movies, and they encourage you to create an account just like all the other streaming services. They highlight their most popular titles. Um, If they have a top 10 list, they'll put that on their webpage. Anything that is new or newly added. Now, I wouldn't expect most of these free services to have 
any brand new movies or TV unless they're originals to the service. But they, many of them have previous seasons of currently running shows or they might have an entire series that's just no longer on the air and other things of that nature. Pluto TV is owned by Paramount, and this is their free movie and streaming service. They have quite a lot of different content on here as well. They also have live TV channels, so you can look at a guide just like a TV guide to see what kind of channels they have, what is on currently, and what is scheduled. It does look like they have a variety of channels based on genre. So they have a romance channel. They have a horror channel. I think they also have a cat channel that just shows cat videos. So there are many different things that you can find on Pluto TV here. Tubi TV is currently owned by Fox. And it is a website that boasts that they have fewer ads than cable. So they don't have as many ads, but they do still have ads. It looks like they also have sections specifically for kids, live TV, and Spanish language content. They also partner with the WB, MGM, Paramount, and Lionsgate to provide content. So on Tubi TV, you will see content that are owned by those listed companies. And with all of these streaming services, really, it's just a matter of taking a look at what they're offering and seeing which ones are going to work best for you or have something that you find interesting on them. And especially with these free streaming services, you may as well try them out because it's going to cost you nothing to just see what they've got. And if you don't like them, you just can walk away and stop watching them. Many of these sites also have prompted me to log in with my Google account it is possible that multiple of these services will let you create that account but use your Google account information to log in. So what I mean by that is if you have a Gmail email address, you'd be using your Gmail login information to access an account on these different streaming services. Not all of them do that, but anymore, lots of services are making that option available. And then Plex is another streaming service. Um, It looks like they have very different channels as well. Some of them look like they're series related and others look like they may actually be real channels like Hallmark, Movies, and More, I'm sure, is a real channel, and Ion is also a real TV channel. But then we've got just some shows and movies, so there's all sorts of stuff on on these different services. Some of them have the live TV, some of them don't. And I will mention as well that some of these services do have news stations as well. So if you're considering getting rid of cable and are worried about not being able to see the national news, possibly even local news, you can still get that news and watch those channels with some of these free services. One of those services is Haystack News. Haystack News is just all news content. You actually do have the option to view the the video's content by headline 
or you can choose the type of news that you're wanting. I also believe if you have the app, you can actually tell it which channels and which types of news you're interested in. And it will start curating your feed so that you're seeing more of what you're interested in. And then our last completely free service is Fossum TV. And Fossum TV is just another, another free streaming service. It looks like they've got some classic movies, so maybe some older films, but they have newer ones as well. They also have an app that works with some smart TVs and they have apps that work with streaming sticks or just tablets and other devices as well. So now let's take a look at a few of these free tier services. There are quite a few and they're pretty much all that we're going to look at today. They're all associated with bigger companies. So the first one is Amazon and they have a free service called Amazon Freebie. So Amazon has a streaming service that they call Prime Video. And you can access Prime Video on Amazon's website. And then when you get to the Prime Video section of the Amazon website, you'll want to look for free with ads. And they have a fair amount of titles on this free tier, but you are going to want to make sure you click the free with ads to look at those specific titles. Otherwise, it can get a little confusing because on Amazon Prime, you can actually rent and buy TV and movies. They also have a selection of titles that are included with their paid Prime membership, or you can subscribe to just the Amazon Prime video streaming service. But then they have all these other free ones that are free for anyone to watch. So rather than getting confused about which is which until you try to go watch the video and it won't play or it tells you you need to rent or buy it, clicking that free with ads is what's going to get you that list. Sling TV is another streaming service that they have live TV as well as on-demand movies and TV shows. So their free tier is called Sling Free Stream. And you don't have to have an account to start. Again, having an account is going to allow you to kind of save things that you want to watch later or like if you need to stop in the middle of something, if you have an account, it would save your progress if it's an on-demand item that you're watching. So there are a few different reasons why you might want an account, but you don't have to have one to watch on the free stream of Sling. This is also another example where we can watch news. So we can watch news stations on multiple streaming platforms. And then it looks like they're recommending some titles to us and giving us reasons why we should subscribe to the other tiers. And it looks like they have some programming where you can watch the first episode for free and then you would have to pay to view the other episodes or the other seasons of a series. And they are also going to switch their content every so often. Vudu is another streaming service, kind of like Amazon, where you can rent or buy TV and movies. But they do also have a selection of free titles where you can watch them free with ads. Vudu is associated with Walmart and Fandango. 
So they are associated with large companies, and they have a wide variety of movies especially, but also TV shows that you can watch for free. And they do update their content pretty regularly as well. And YouTube also has free movies and TV that you can watch. So with YouTube, a lot of their content is free with ads anyway. Um, It's kind of hard to get away from ads at this point anywhere. But YouTube also has a paid live TV streaming service called YouTube TV. And with that, they also have on-demand titles that you can rent or buy. So just like Amazon and Vudu. In addition to those, they do have a section specifically of free with ad titles. So if you go to the YouTube website, if you look on your left side menu and scroll down, they have this explore section and it has a bunch of subjects. If you choose movies and TV, then you have the option to watch free with ads. You can click that option and it looks like for each of their free titles they do also have this little box with green type that says free with ads so that's definitely a good easy way to determine what is free versus what is not as you can see there are just a ton of streaming services out there and you don't have to pay a lot of money to be able to enjoy a wide variety of content. You just need to know where to look. We've touched on just a few streaming services today, but hopefully I gave you some new services to try out. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure you let us know by following our MCPL 360 page on Facebook and our MCPL MO channel on YouTube. We premiere new videos every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And if you miss the live event, you can always find all of our videos on YouTube on one of our many technology-related playlists on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again next time.